I have some a fun story to tell. Let's see. And let's just make sure, turn off the phone, turn everything off. <laughs> okay, looks like we are recording. So good morning. Uh, this is our Monday boost. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Jacqueline Kane, Master Energy Healer, helping people get to the root cause of their physical, emotional, financial debt and clear it so that we can live with more energy, more fun, and just more ease, flow, and abundance. And so if you're watching, um, say hello on Facebook. Um, you can hop on Zoom and actually interact with us, which is much more fun. And welcome, Joyce. Thank you so much for being here. I oh. wanted to share a story. So some of you know that I golf. And a few weeks ago, so the only reason I golf is because when my husband and I met, his first Christmas present to me was golf clubs. <laughs> so <laughs> get your better. <laughs> Like, what am I doing with golf clubs? Everybody was like, oh, isn't that nice? I'm like, yeah, I guess. So um, over the last 30 years, I took lessons, um, practiced, asked for help. Um, because golfs, they make it look easier than it is. It's a lot harder to hit that little ball, <laughs> get it all the way down the fairway into a little hole. So over the last years, I don't, I don't golf that much. I golf maybe at the most four times a year. Um, it's not something that I say, wake up and say, Hey, I got to go golfing today, but I love doing it with my kids, with my husband and, and extended family. So we were away last weekend and the extended family were going golfing. So they hooked us up with this other guy, because when you golf, if usually there's a foursome and we had an odd number, so we were hooked up with this other guy. So he was all impressed. He was an, actually a pretty good golfer himself, and my husband's a good golfer. But every shot we did, he like exclaimed, like, oh my God, that was amazing. Oh my God, you much practice all the time. And he was sharing with us that he, he golfs probably three to four times a week, and he practices like every day. So <laughs> my joke was that I only golf maybe four to five times a year and I never practice. <laughs> <laughs> it's more the mental game. And for those people who know about golf, it is a mental game. I think all sports are mental. Life is mental. We have to achieve our mental focus to achieve anything in life and it's about getting rid of the the mental chatter getting rid of the mean inner critic i used to have a paralyzing penelope voice who would just make me tired and not get me not allow me to get anything done so where are you spending a lot of time maybe practicing or learning or acquiring new um, new gifts, learning new things, where really, if you spent some time on the mental game, it would change things. I'm would you like to share, Joyce? <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing. <laughs> um, well, as you know, it's been a journey for me for the last uh five months going on six months uh, five months it's it is exactly five months um since i had the stroke and uh so there's been a lot of mental stuff going on in my head because fortunately the mind was never affected by the, the stroke um my equilibrium and things how i move and just do things definitely was so it was getting back to doing all that kind of stuff, but the mind was always good. So the mind was a challenge. 
I think of all these things because it was good that I should be doing, it could be doing, blah, 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 blah. And that was making me unhappy. That was frustrating because I couldn't do them. So, so that was all negative. So I had to really work and try to go back to being positive about doing everything. And where I am today is um, on Friday, my 24 hour caregiver will, it will be her last day. I will be on my own. Um, All day? So that's a huge thing. So I mean, there's other things I, I still am not driving. I. I'm hoping to get some answers in the next week or so why I can't drive because my mind is fine. My reactions are good. And by all that, I just can't walk well. That's all. So all in all, there's a lot of mind battles going on. So when you're talking about that, <laughs> um, thank God for the work that we've been doing because I would just go back and, and do the exercises that you gave us to do. And it's amazing how it would keep my my spirit up, my my thoughts positive. I've, I've been back to church now for three Sundays in a row, uh, just attending church. But our tag sale is going to be taking place in a week or two. And I've been working on marking stuff sitting down, people bring me stuff and whatnot, but I'm doing something useful mm -hmm. that is creating in me that I am still worthy to yes. do things and that I am worthy because I really had gotten to the point where I wasn't. Mm -hmm. And we had had a long process to get to that point and then I just like lost it. Mm -hmm. But it's coming back now. So that's my story. Yeah. Thanks, thanks to our work. Well, and you were really in a, in a situation where you were kind of trapped in your body. Yeah. And really, so you were really facing all the frustration of not being able to do everything that you used to do. And you're a very independent person. Yeah, it was, it was, I mean, it, it, it still is. I mean, there still is a lot, but I'm not thinking I can't anymore. I I can't. I will be able to do this. I just have to work getting there, get, getting it done. It's not. I can't. I will. But it's it's keeping that that level of thinking up there. Sometimes it's very very difficult. Mm -hmm. I'll admit that. And there's times when I just want to say, forget <laughs> it. But that doesn't thankfully last very long. Mm -hmm. Good. So, yes, I'm here today. I made it. <laughs> you are. I'm so happy you're here. Um, so it is hard sometimes to get past the, I don't want to ask for help. I want to do it all myself. I am so angry at my, my body, my situation for not letting me do it myself. Yes, especially when you know that you can, or I, I should say that you have done it all this time, and then all of a sudden you can't do it. Only you have to change it to say, I can't do it right now, but if I keep going, I can do it again. It's changing that's different. Yeah. It's catching it in the moment too, because there's a few steps, right? It's that pushing. Again, it's that pushing energy. I want to do it. Just let me do it, right? And we push and we push. And it's in those moments. First, first step is awareness, right? You have to be aware that I'm pushing for this to happen. For me, I'm pushing to make a certain number in my business. I'm pushing to get out there and be in front of people. So first I have to know when I'm doing that, right? Yes. It took you some time to realize you were in that energetic pushing, right? Condition, right. energy. 
instead of just being, oh, okay, let's do it differently. Yeah. But we've been so conditioned to, to achieve and to be a certain way, to achieve certain goals that it's in us. So when we're trying to change and we're, we're, we're meeting so much resistance, maybe, you know, there's weight loss goals that we're not achieving. There's income goals we're not achieving. How can we pull back, right? And first you have to become aware that you're pushing that agenda. So that's one. And then when you are, what do you do when you realize it, right? Like you had mentioned, take a few breaths, take a step back and refocus. Yeah. Is this really an alignment for me? Or is there something better <clears throat> if I stand back and if I think, look at the bigger picture, <coughs> maybe there's something better that could happen, right? But I have to take that step of stepping back and taking a few breaths. And then it's reevaluating and really tuning in. You can tap, you can journal. There's so many things you can do to readjust where you're going. Right. that happens on the golf course it happens in life every aspect it happens in all kinds of relationships so once you're aware of that pattern then you can change it anything coming up for you joyce when i say that well i'm, I'm just thinking back it's it's you know it's it seems like it, it's been such a long journey you know and um yeah thoughts keep come back up like uh when i came home i realized i was in the hospital six weeks i came home i missed all of spring mm -hmm. because when i left my little apple tree out here was still bare you know had leaves on but no buds or anything and when i came home it had little apples on it so i missed that whole process but I picked apples off of it because, well, I don't spray or anything like that. It's just, you know, they're golden, delicious apples, which I love. So last Sunday, I had my son Phil pick the apples off because the birds were enjoying them too much and they, they're going to look for water, you know, until they peck at them. Well, hey, I don't want that. But he picked apples that were this big. Wow. And, and not all of them, but there were some this big. And it's just like, I spent the summer watching those apples keep getting bigger. And that, you know, I would have never noticed that before. I would just say, oh, the apples are getting there, you know? But you, almost day to day, you could see the change in them. And so it was a new experience for me that I would have never had before. Yeah. So there's, you've got to, you get them hone in on those things that be grateful that you have the opportunity to see. Yeah. yeah. And there's a lot of little things like that, that I can look back on now and say, like the saying goes, slow down and smell the roses or stop and smell the roses. <laughs> yeah. I had plenty of time to, there was things that I never would have particularly noticed if I hadn't just been not doing anything so you got to look at the blessings that you get in between all the rest of the stuff um, and it's not always the easiest thing to do i mean to, to overall but you, you still got to look for the blessings you really do and yeah. it's so much and people have been so great and people that you hadn't really heard from in a while you hear from and and uh you stop to think, oh, maybe I am worthy or something. And, there, you know, it, you get a good feeling out of that. So there's a lot of pluses to the minuses. Yeah. And it's sometimes we really have to refocus. You do. You know, right? you yeah. had to look at the gift and the stroke. 
and the gift in where you're at. Yes. And that opened up so much for you. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, a whole lot of things. And you know, it opened up a lot of things for other people too. Uh, the group at church that I was were doing the church services with, there was no choice. Choice. They had to step up and do something or nothing would get done. Well, they stepped up beautifully and things are happening. And I came home yesterday and it's like, I'll do everything that I can to support you, but I can't do what they're doing, yeah. which is what I was doing. Yeah. And it actually feels good, really very good to see them blossoming and, and going and doing yeah, nice. Yeah. So what if we do a little tapping around um, letting go of our conditioned patterns? Okay. That can be so hard to do. <laughs> <laughs> you got that right. <laughs> so for those of you who know tapping, you can do whatever points you use. Otherwise, you can follow along. It's a very powerful mind-body tool to help us shift energetically, to help us release the fears, heal the wounded parts of ourselves, and just to shift into a higher vibration. So you can just follow along, repeat after me. If I say something that does not resonate with you, then you shift it into something that resonates with you. Um, we're just going to go through the points. I don't want to change. I don't want to change. Change is hard. Things are hard. It can be hard. It can be hard. And I'm so set in my ways. And I'm so set in my ways. I don't want to do anything different. I don't want to do anything different. I can keep going along. I can keep going along. And being who I am. Being who I am. Doing what I do. Doing what I do. I'll get to my goals eventually. Say again. I'll get to my goals eventually. I, I'll get to my goals eventually, yes. I may achieve them. I may achieve them. When I'm ready. When I'm ready. And if not, that's okay. And if not, that's okay. Because change is hard. Because change is hard. Change can be scary. Change can be scary. The unknown is scary. The unknown is scary. And I don't know what I have to do to change. And I don't know what I have to do to change. And I'm scared about how my life might change. And I'm scared how my life might change. I don't like change. I don't mind changing. I may have been taught. I may have been taught. That change is not easy. That change is not easy. And that it's scary. And that is scary. And starting right now and going forward. And starting right now and going forward. I honor these beliefs and conditions inside of me. I honor me for being in the condition I'm in. And I'm opening myself up. And I'm opening myself up. To letting go of what's no longer serving. To letting go of what no longer is serving. And I'm opening myself up. And I'm opening myself up. To receiving so much more. To receiving so much more. Ease, flow, and abundance. Ease, flow, and abundance. And all of that starts right now. And all of that starts right now. So just close your eyes. Tune into your body. And just notice what you sense in your body. Notice what thoughts come to mind, what memories come to mind. What comes to mind is calmness. Um, you mentioned memories, but memories are that. I was thinking that I never will be able to, I can't. Um, I'll never be the same. But now I'm looking at I am 
coming back. I am being who I am and it's slowly going back to much of what I was. And it's, it's almost um, mind boggling that it's happening and I, I, I don't know how much more is going to open up, but I can, I can really feel that I'm, I'm returning to myself because I lost me. I lost me for a while and that was scary. Yeah. You mean after the stroke? Yes. Yeah. Um, and and then after coming home and then not being able to do things and whatnot, but it was really it was really um, I don't know if it was scary, but it was a feeling that I really can't express when I realized I missed a period of time that I didn't I don't remember existing in except laying in a bed. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it was just like. How could I, I mean, I had a window to look out and I gradually saw trees get leaves, but I didn't, wasn't thinking about the season. I wasn't thinking about anything. I mean, I just, I was in this vacuum. Yeah. Um, So it was hard to, to, when I got back to my self sort of again, that I, oh, there's apples on the tree. Well, there wasn't what there was no leaves. I mean, what they weren't green before. There was no blossoms before. I lost all that. Yeah. So there's no memories of it, and that was that was a weird feeling. It was just like you would, all of a sudden went in the vacuum, and you know there was nothing going on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that had to be very scary. So, very scary. Uh, to be able to look out, feel the feel the rain, see the wind, feel the coldness, feel the hotness. Uh, it felt good. It really did. Yeah. Well, I know there's a lot of people who are very happy you're still here with us. Yeah, so. that there are, and you know, and I've had some some great visits and. Um, we're going to move forward. That's that's what that's where we're heading. Slow, one step at a time. I am walking somewhat with a cane now, and sometimes I can take a few steps without anything. So, you know, that's progress. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's progress. <laughs> You're still way ahead of some people who experience strokes. So yeah. that's what I that's what I've been told. But going through the occupational therapist and, and down the road, walk in there now the last two times and she says, Okay, what are we gonna do today? I said, What do you mean what are we gonna do today? What do you want me to do? She said, well, I don't know, you've done everything I've given you to do already. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been it's you know, and I've met new people. I mean, and I've made contact with somebody new, and, and they're they're beautiful people. The the um, uh, the other therapist and helped me walk and do things and whatnot. And it's been I, I it's been amazing to myself from where I was to be with doing what I am now. I'm not running any circles, that's for sure. Yeah. But to take the cane and walk on an obstacle course and turn around and come back, sure, maybe it's only 25 feet, 40 feet, depending, but I can do it. Mm-hmm. You know? That's about celebrating every little step. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Or stand for five minutes, not holding on to anything. Yeah. Most difficult thing for me is to stand on one leg, but I had trouble doing that before I had the stroke. Yeah. So it's yeah, you know, weighing find the balance. That's mm-hmm. what the, that's what it is. Yeah. So yeah. well, you're doing fabulous. And look, you're here. I'm here. And you know, <laughs> I've missed I've missed our work together, you know, just being here on Monday mornings or 
getting involved in some of the other projects which you've been busy as all heck knowing. <laughs> Did you have your retreat yet? Not yet. That's in October. And yeah, I'll share some of the things that are happening. Um, yeah, there's I mean, a lot happening. I think uh, to do, I'd like to be able to <clears throat> get back and, and get more involved in doing some things. Are there setbacks? There are some, yeah. I, there, there's some things I'm going to have to just deal with. That's all there is to it. But uh, and everything happens as it should, right? It do it as it is, yeah. So we're, um, I'm blessed with good friends uh, and family. Um, with you, Pat, I, I, I can't wait to talk with Pat. I still have issues with my focusing like on the computer. Yeah. Uh, sometimes an hour is like max when I can be on there. Yeah. Beyond that, yeah. I have to really struggle. Yeah. Um, and that's just stroke white. It's not, it's not that my eyes are bad because I've just been to the eye doctor. I'm, I'm going to get new glasses, but it's not that it affected my eyes. It's just the, the, the blurriness, the focusing kind of thing. Is, yeah. It's, we're getting there. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, it was great to be with you today. And I will leave. Yeah, we have a bunch of, um, oh my God, there's a few things coming up. There's Up Level Your Life Masterclass, which is coming up. And I think Thursday, I think the date is October 6th. Um, it's everybody gets to come to that for their first one for free. So I'll leave that information below. Yeah, and then do that in the middle of the tag sale. <laughs> <laughs> is it on Thursday? Your tag sales on the no, weekend? No, but that's it. No, nope. you know, that's so pricey. Ah, yes, yes, we'll, yes, yes. See. We'll, we'll see. Yeah, just just turn it on for everybody. Everybody yeah. could use some of that. And then the retreat is in October. Um, Christy and I are putting that together at Kripalu. We're going to be setting clear intentions. You're going to be clearing your ancestral energy that's not working for you these days and stepping into a whole new you and learning human design. It's another way to understand who you are and the blueprint. It's kind of like your blueprint to your dream life. Yeah. So lots happening and more things, even amazing things that are coming in November. There's an ancestral energy um, summit that's coming along that my friend is putting on. And also my new book, my collaborative book is coming out in November, which Pat is in. Well, you um, there's, a, yeah. there's a few <laughs> other people, who, amazing practitioners, practitioners who are in the book. It's called the Energy Medicine Solution, Mind-Blowing Results for Living an Extraordinary Life. And the stories and the healers in there are amazing. So lots happening. Um, I wish you all an amazing Monday and a great week. And I will see you in a couple of weeks. And I will see you tomorrow. You will see me tomorrow. Have a good one. <laughs> Take care, you everybody. Too. Bye. Bye now.